Hello, extra time. Are you trying to the league not to get a hold? Because it, it damages your reputation. It, it makes people, when they read it, just laugh at you. The team of the best playing in the league one, and they're playing in Europe, and they're playing in the credit, and the game in this country. Maybe we should next have been handed down to manage the Irish team. You're very welcome back to the Extra Time that is Sportscast. It is lovely to have you all here. Can't believe we're finally listening to that uh, great little tune there with Dunphy screaming about Stephen Kenny at the start there, and finally getting back to to some League of Ireland action. Never thought it would happen. We we hit all of those uh, Italian ninety shows. I, I never felt like that one would end. If I'm honest, hopefully you've enjoyed them. Do go back and have a listen if you've not. But returning from their exile after the Italian ninety shows are Mark Ferris and, and Andrew Dempsey. I may well have to. Insert some rapturous applause here, lads, uh, to, for your for your grammar term. We're all pretty used to listening to fake crowd noise at this point, so um, might not be might not be uh, even detected. To be honest, how was the enforced off season been on you on the two of you? We're just delighted to be back to actually talk about real football. Um, yeah, I was watching a bit of Major League Baseball over the weekend, where not only did it have fake noise, the fake crowds in the grounds, which is completely bizarre. Um, is plus, also a couple, a couple of teams have got COVID, so maybe we shouldn't talk about that. Yeah, is that the FIFA style thing where they have the the computer generated crowds? Yeah, yeah, it's bizarre. But but they only have it in every now and again. The game I was watching, which was the Chicago Cubs game, Wrigley Field, and like every other shot was just like boundless empty stadium bar. Anyone who kind of knows a little bit about baseball might know there's these Wrigley rooftop seats. So across the street from Wrigley Park. Is these tall buildings where people have built up tiered seating and you can buy a ticket to watch a game. So you can do that in the normal season. But uh, safe to say they were full of real people on Saturday night. Who I, can't, I can only imagine how much it was to get a ticket for those. So um, we're not um, advocating people hiring cherry pickers or anything like that no. to go. We're going to be talking about watch LOI in a lot of detail. So yeah, they won't. They won't need to. They'll be the you know the old classic standing in a tree looking over the low part of the stadium <laughs> or something like that. My favorite thing to see. Andrew, have you been? I know you've been fairly busy. I've seen you pretty much picking up all of the slack that uh, a few of us have maybe let go of <laughs> in the off season. You've been you've been a busy man. How are you, how are you keeping? Yeah, good, good. Uh, finished with the long reads on the site, so I looked at. Oh god, I think it was was a Cove Cove's first division title win in 07. That was really I thought that was a really good piece. Or, well, I really enjoyed writing about it anyway. Then the UCD 2009 piece. Um, we're looking at the side that won it. Yeah, that was some team, Andrew. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed I reading think, that one. Absolutely, I think 55 medals, 55 medals have been won since then by the players. Who played. Side, so. I've noticed okay. an increase in these long reads. Those who who are, are haven't subscribed to the Athletic are going to be like, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> um, but anyway, right. Well, let's. We we've managed to talk about long reads and baseball, and we've not yet jumped into League of Ireland. We're nearly three minutes back on the show, so let's do it. Let's let's talk about watch LOI. Um, are are we feeling pretty excited? Are we pessimistic? Are we a little bit peeved that it's taken a, a global pandemic, practically wiping out a chunk of each team's income, to eventually sit down and, and figure this one out? Well, I, I like the idea of even just, you know, when the games are, you know, there's plenty of games that are live on Irish television during the year when there is no pandemic. But if we're a League of Ireland fans, you're at a game normally on a Friday night. Um, and so you don't actually get to see the live games. So I think having the the games, two games on Friday, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday effectively and, and staggered kickoff times actually gives the opportunity to see other games. And that means the pass, which... Um, uh, well, it's, it's 55 euro if you're based here in Ireland. Makes it great value that you're able to see all the, the Premier Division games. We'll talk a little bit about the First Division later on. So, um, And then some of the games are on RTE. And then there are games that are on air. And those games, if they're on air, won't be available on the pass in Ireland. But if you're overseas, the 69 euro pass will do you all the games. So, um, no, I think it's tremendous value. And they're obviously pushing it hard this week because this is funding the fact that these games are behind closed doors this streaming service is essentially funding um you know the FBI and the money is coming into to the clubs to to try and help them through the shortened season the fact that there are no fans for this initial stage and you know there might be you know we've got 200 fans allowed in the minute maybe 500 at a later date to be confirmed um you know all that remains to be seen so it's really important that people probably get behind it but I think if you're into League of Ireland, you're going to be either buying your pass or your season ticket holder, and the 
the clubs, I think I think all the clubs, if you're season ticket holder, you're getting your your pass for free and maybe a couple of extra things like money off your season ticket next season, things like that. Yeah, it's it's I tell you what, the the way it's come about I think is pretty exciting considering uh, and and as a an avid fan who who would follow mostly every bit of news that was coming through. I have to say I got bored out of my teeth during the, this enforced off season by the constant discussion or sort of um, you know, no no real foundation to a lot of what was being said. It was just ideas being floated around for what felt effectively like months. We had Quinn out doing interviews, which you'd read, but then kind of a little bit after go, I don't think any of that's gonna happen. So when I, it felt like nearly I started paying attention a bit again and watch LOI sort of just popped up. I know it had been kind of mooted, but it did feel a little bit sort of out left left field. So I'm kind of nervously excited now. One side of me can't wait to essentially, as you said, have all those options when we, we can't essentially get to the games. But another side of me is worried that there is going to be an element here that whoever wants to beat the League of Ireland with a stick will be able to use this as an excuse to say, look, the demand isn't here for this or that. Maybe it's a good barometer for, for showing just what kind of demand there is uh, for, for future plans. Or do you think this is it? Do you think we've got the streaming service now available here? This, this won't go away even when fans return? Yeah, do we think it's going to continue next season when crowds are back in, fingers crossed, and all that? Um, I, I think it probably, I think it probably will because the technology will be there. Like they're investing in it. It's it's not the track champ, which people might be familiar with the the single camera kind of off a remote control going left and right, no replays, um, the, no crowd noise bar you could hear maybe what was been talked of in the in the press box whereas this will be different like RT are sending like they've got the commentators you know from across their sports department that are that are there so like so Jer Canning is doing games so John Kenny's doing games and um, Siobhan Madding is doing some live games and others have been talked before that on uh, the highlights package her as live wasn't wasn't as good when her reporting was excellent so um, I didn't see George Hamilton there. I think he's maybe doing the live games that are on RT as well. Mm. And they're sending their commentators to the to the grounds. They're not doing them back at, at Montrose. So they'll be able to kind of see what's uh, what's going on. They, they'll, they've they kind of said there'll be more than one camera at most games. So obviously the games that are live on television will have the multiple cameras, not as much as normal, I don't think. Um, but they're hoping to do a little bit more. And it'll be way better than, than the, the track champ. And wow. It'll 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 set the bar, um, for what we'll want to see probably next season. It was interesting to see we we're recording here on Tuesday evening. The FBI have done their watch LOI Premier Division table, so uh, Cork City are sitting top of that. That's the the number of people that have paid for subscriptions, and that excludes the season ticket holders who, as I said, are getting tickets for free. So uh, is is that surprising? Given given how Cork have have started the campaign off, is it is it surprising to you that people are are that willing to still pile in? Well, maybe a little bit surprised. Maybe they, Cork usually gets, you know, usually decent crowds, especially when the team are doing well. They obviously, they've only won the one game so far in the season, but it's so long ago, maybe people have forgotten about that and they're like, oh yeah, I'll, 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 get, on this, I'll get on the stream. But um, I suppose it's, if you're looking at, you had to, uh, I think when you went in and bought it, you could choose what team you wanted to do. And, uh, if you're maybe a random person that's interested in buying one in Dublin, you have your choice of what four teams to to pick. Whereas if you're down in Cork, down you go, you pick Cork City. Um, you know, maybe that's the the reason why we've done it. Andrew, who did you uh, who did you plump for in the Premier Division? Anyone but Cork, wasn't it? <laughs> did, did you say you were a Finn Harps fan? Maybe? I, I'm, a, I'm apparently a Finn Harps fan now because obviously they don't seem to take much notice of the first division unfortunately it's i think it's great the the price of it's great i think everything else the setup of it seems great just the one thing that does annoy me is that there's no first division cup maybe like even if they could put one game a week on maybe like one of the bigger games on a week in the first division that's just the, the one thing that annoys me but look bar that look i don't think you can really complain about it and um hey yeah, look ho- hopefully it's there to stay i don't I'd like to think it would, but then the cynical nature of me thinks probably look it's probably gonna be gone after all this. I, I reckon O'Shane Langan's ears are burning now. He'll be you know <laughs> sort of track chab style down with a camera himself, ready to do commentary on extra time that he the first division, maybe. McGarry, do you wanna come in there? Well just Andrew, I know that while it's it isn't part of Watch LOI, the first division clubs, 
there are a number of first division clubs that are actually going to yeah. stream matches for yeah. their for their fans. No, yeah, they are. Yeah, um, I know of I think five or six clubs that are are doing it now. I think Cove have is it Trevor Welsh doing the the commentary? Um, yeah, for them. I saw that. Yeah. So yeah, that's like that's you know quite an impressive coup for them. Yeah. Obviously, I watched the the Galway trials trial one the other day, and look, that was mightily impressive for. You know, look at the end of the day, it's volunteers who are doing it for the first division clubs, not not the likes of RTE coming to town to to put cameras left, right, and centre. It's it's volunteers who are doing. It. I was really impressed that the Galway one. Um, I'm pretty sure Longford are going to have some sort of a stream available for Friday and for the rest of the season. Um, it's not been confirmed yet, but it, I think it will be confirmed soon enough. And um, yeah, no, I think all the other clubs are mainly going to do them just with the exception of one or two but I'm sure we'll see what happens in the next few days I'm a little bit conflicted in a way as well because I'm thinking I'll, I'll end up when I'm older a League of Ireland fan I'll be telling younger League of Ireland fans you don't know what the suffering is like I used to have to watch it on Expe I watched Limerick hammered 8-0 by Dundalk on Expe <laughs> you don't know I had to bet a euro to watch the game Cork are, are right at the top I may as well give give this watch LOI Premier Division table for those who maybe haven't seen it. So Cork right at the top, Shamrock Rovers in second, Mark Dyer probably pretty happy with that. Bows in third, Sligo fourth, Pats fifth, Shell sixth, Dundalk down to seventh, my lads, Derry in eighth, Finn Harps ninth, and Waterford in tenth. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think I, I haven't actually haven't gotten my subscription yet. I'll, I'll get on it once we finish here. And, and you know what, I'll give, it, I'll give it Waterford right down the bottom. They need all the support they can get. So. <laughs> I'm pretty just excited all now to see what what progress can be made from this? Apart from now being able to have these games, maybe at a stage further down the line when things are a little bit more back to normal, we can build on this rather than, you know, just this being the the actual solution to all the problems, you know? I think what's also handy is that the you know, the Premier League has just finished last weekend. I know there's playoffs and and their you know, the Champions League will pick up in, in August, but there isn't the relentless um you know, Liverpool, Manchester United, you know, Spurs, uh, Andrews, Chelsea, uh, you know, we can, you know, that opportunity to be able to watch match after match after match. The, so there is a little of breathing room just while this gets mm-hmm. up and running. Um, but the fact that, you know, there's always the talk about, you know, the games, the, you know, a lot of the League of Ireland grounds aren't great uh, when this on TV and that's when the crowds are in them. So it's, they're not going to look great at all with no crowds at all. And I, I'm presuming RT are not doing crowd noise. Um, so we'll have kind of echoing around. But listen, I was out, at, uh, went for a walk at lunchtime and, and, and met someone I, I know go to a lot of League of Ireland games. And he was like, just can't wait to, to see the League of Ireland back on Friday. And he's going to be watching it on the television. Um, a few of us, Andrew and myself, are, are going to be in press boxes around... Uh, Dublin over the next uh, over this weekend and we'll actually be able to get to games ourselves so we'll feel we're in a privileged position just the way that it's set up there's um, I think it's 15 journalists are allowed into the ground and six photographers so the FBI produced a pretty comprehensive document um, you know over several pages going through the the criteria for you know the arrival of teams the um, the different warm-ups you know the, basically the protocol about different water bottles, all that kind of stuff, you know, they're trying to put everything in place and, and the, the clubs that are playing games this weekend are all meeting during the week over either today or, or tomorrow just to agree all the, the details, just to make sure everything is in, in place. But it does mean that um, I think we're looking at our roster, extra time are pretty well covered, that we'll have um, one person at, at most of the games um, over the weekend. So we'll be able to do our match reports and updates, but not just, um, but from the ground, more importantly, not just off the off the television as well. So we'll be hoping to to bring a little bit more colour um, for people just on on the games. The lack of um, crowd noise would be interesting as well. A lot of people had this discussion on a lot of the English football as well. Will you watch it with sound or will you try and listen to what's being said? And you think back to hearing Ollie Horgan shout and work all those times. Uh, yeah, going, and if if, it's if be the microphone if the microphone is in the press box, um, you know, after certain goals, you'll just hear you, you know. Who passed the pass before the assist? It's that type of thing yeah. that we all want to know. So um, I don't know whether I have the commentator. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of shuffling and panicking about who was booked. Yes, lads, it's David Moyler. 
Uh, the song I did for my initiation was uh, Sugar Hill Gang uh, rappers play. It goes a hip hop, a heavy, a heavy to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rock to the bam bam boogie. Say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. I'm more of a FIFA man. I'm awful at Fortnite. It goes a hip hop, a heavy, a heavy to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rock to the bam bam boogie. Say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. I don't hit Alan Pardew, even though he did hip up me. It goes a hip hop, a heavy, a heavy to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rock to the bam bam boogie. Say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm repping. To the beat, a me the groove, and it's gone. Bye. Okay, well look, let's let's get into a quick league catch up. Then we won't spend too long on this games coming up in the next few days. Again, like you mentioned, McDarrett, the fact that they're kind of spread out over the next little while as well. You'll have your Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and kind of games running into Monday and all that. Then just on that, Declan, it, what I noticed when the fixtures came out is. It's it's a shortened season. We've gone to 18 games. Most teams have played four in the Premier Division. A, couple, a few have played five. Um, there's very few midweek games. So there are midweek games this Monday, and they're basically for the teams that, um, you know, Pats are, are home on, on Monday. I think I had that right. That, um, you know, they're those back games. But there's very little midweek, uh, midweek games. There's a couple more in the First Division because they've only played three games. So um, now, admittedly, there's four teams playing in Europe, and if they progress, then we'll have more midweek games. Um, and there's FAI, sorry, it's FAI Cup, isn't it coming up as well? Yeah. But there's only six teams playing and playing and playing in that in, in the first round. So that was just one thing that I noticed that while yeah, while the games are spread out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there won't be a lot of midweek games. There's no Dave Donnelly's very upset, but there's no Leinster Senior Cup. There's no uh, League Cup. The FAI Cup is only league teams. And as I say, the first round only has three ties in it. So I think that's probably a, a good thing that there isn't so many games being squeezed in from a player welfare point of view. Yeah, absolutely. But as we get into a quick league catch-up then, I mean, we've got to start with Sligo, who pulled off the massive bloody coup. Uh, Sligo go and, and grab all the headlines by going out and, and signing Junior Agede uh, of and. What a sign that is for Rovers, you know? And they are Rovers in this scenario because of that massive bloody sign But a couple of points on this, right, we got to get into before we just talk about how interesting it'll be for the club. Saw a lot of anger from maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure it was fans. I know there was a lot of League of Ireland people having, having a word basically about the fundraising of the club and they felt that it had all maybe been lumped on, on one player. I can't personally imagine that's true. I can see some discontent as well that to that to that idea of you cut pay or you let people go and start now you're signing like this. But to be fair, let's just get that out there. That was at a time when the future, the whole league was unsure. We're in a totally different scenario now. People are signing players again. It's fair game. I I, I think it's pretty simple and straightforward like that. What do you what do you guys make of the transfer? It's it's a bit of a surprising one. I personally think that it's a huge risk from Sligo going for him because. Look, they're they're not in a great position in the league, and like, what what if they do go down? Like, if they do go end up in the first division, like, I don't think he's on little money. If you get me, I, I what if they do go down, and if they put themselves at risk of obviously having to look for more money in the future, you know, like you you don't want to see that. Mm. I see it as a bit of a risk, but obviously, if it pays off, it pays off. It yeah, it probably is a bit of a gamble, but I, I suppose. They saw how the first four games of the season went and maybe they identified uh, an option. I suppose you have to, uh, probably a little bit naive on my side, I suppose you're, you're second guessing no matter what you say, but it might be a bit naive to say you got to trust that the club maybe know what they're doing a little bit on this. I'd be a bit concerned for them in the sense of they had a great goal scorer last year in Romeo Parks. They were way too reliant on him. Um, so I don't know if, if that's just what they're going to go for again. Uh, judging by the first four league games, for those who don't remember, they lost all, didn't score until the fourth game. They're, they probably are in in pretty similar position here. Do, do either of you think that this? I, I know it's too early to be talking about like will this relegate them or not. But is this going to be a, a sort of season defining change for them, or as I said, is it just another goal scorer in a team that wasn't really working all that well? well it, it is the difficult thing is if you were looking at the league table in normal season, you go the team had lost their first four games. You go not a great start, but but opportunity for them to to rectify it. It was why Sligo were so strong and not wanting an 18-game season, that they've only got 13 games to try and get themselves out of it. And that really just doesn't give themselves a lot of time. So they've taken a, a gamble, taken a punt. Um, 
maybe not too much of a gamble because they've got last season's top goal scorer, but they probably just looked at him and went, listen, we've got to try and, and do something. It is different than any other season because there's only, you know, they've only 14 games to try and, and, and overcome. And, you know, just above them in the table is Cork City, who you're probably saying should get stronger during, during the season. So speculate to accumulate, and that's what, the, that's what they've done. Junior won't be there for this guy. I can't say Junior without thinking of um, Sean Connery. Spanos. No, Sean Connery and Indiana Jones because he keeps calling them Junior. And it's just in my head every time I think of it. But, yeah, he, he won't be around for the first game against Derry. Like, Derry would be absolutely sick in time imagine to see him lighted out there. So it's a good thing that he, he's not available. That first game back on Friday is 5.45 p.m. actually on LOI. So watch LOI, so I better just say that. But that's because of quarantine rules, by the way. It's not that he's, he's not moved across or whatever. It's just because of quarantine rules that, that Junior won't be able to play that first game. Derry will be interesting themselves. Andrew, I was mentioned this to you beforehand. Adam Hamill. It looks like he's had a pretty useful career. I, I can recall seeing him a few times, actually, in the Championship and League One. It's, it's Barnsley he's largely spent a, a chunk of his career at, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I suppose like I would... Um, I wouldn't watch it an awful lot of um, obviously championship and league one football but I suppose when you do you kind of watch the, the playoffs and oh god it must have been a few years ago now when he was with Barnsley and he ended up scoring a screamer for, for Barnsley in a playoff final and was from 35, 40, 30, 35 yards outside look he, he's definitely got quality and I think he has worked with um, Declan Devine before maybe when he was in I think Livingston I think with, yeah. when Stephen Kenny was over there yeah. so um, I know the last few years haven't been exactly great for him but um, for a side like there you have Europe I think he's definitely worth a punt mm. No he is he's very, He's an interesting signing alright the, the other Friday game just to, to touch on that I mean this, we kind of have to touch on this one mainly due to a signing that was made just today or yesterday I can't remember um, Dundalk and St. Pat's were looking pretty pally having just handed over only Georgie Kelly from one to the other which is uh, yeah it's an interesting one for back in the days when you weren't allowed Lone players to the teams of the same division, in a couple of leagues. This is this is a serious sign for Pats, and it really bolsters their attacking options. Now you'd say with with Hale and Clark and a few others up there, isn't it? Yeah, Pats had a huge problem last season with goal scoring. I think that it was a terrible record. I think the likes. I think Gary Shaw maybe got two goals for them and stuff like that. So to sign Kelly, who obviously just wasn't getting a, a look in at, at at Dundalk and wants to, you know, has. Uh, Knows all about Stephen O'Donnell, so I think that's a really, really good signing for, um, for Pat. A lot of talk that David McMillan might be, um, coming back to to Dundalk, and I suppose it'd be remiss if we just didn't, maybe just pass on our sympathies to Parry Taft's family and everyone at Dundalk for the, the tragic loss of their groundsman up at Ory Park. Um, you could see the outpouring of, you know, sadness and how well regarded he was right across the league. Um, you know, everyone around. Other clubs were were very much aware of of who Harry was, so I think it's it's worthwhile just kind of noting that as well, Declan. Yeah, very much, very much. Just when you were saying Dave McMillan, they're actually um, another one of them. Traditionally, not a you know a player returning, acting as a new signing. Not totally the case, but we didn't even really get a look at your man Kolovich, who played I think the last twenty minutes of the Harps game, which was the last before lockdown. So I imagine this time is going to have helped him settle in a bit with the team, and so he could be a he could be very, very interesting if he's in right from the start now. It could be a little while, but don't forget, they did, they did pay for him. There's no team, I imagine, bar probably Sligo, who, who were happy to have this break. But um, we go back to the Dundalk Rovers game just before everything closed down again. Like, I did have some harsh criticisms of Dundalk that night. I can't remember if we talked about them in the podcast or what, but, but certainly they, they looked a fair cut below Shamrock Rovers on that night, I thought. So I wonder... I imagine it can't have done Dundalk too much harm, to be honest. No, the the only thing about the break is that the you know they dumped the top four cup once we knew right, okay, the league can start up again. But what that did mean was that Dundalk Rovers, and um, Bows and and Derry, sorry, yeah, Bows and Derry, were able to do collective training together a little bit ahead of everyone else and. Uh, I, I I think that it it might just give a little bit of an advantage. So um, you know, clubs were able to do other things. I'm not getting into anything else, but just in terms of what was the top four teams were able to get together. I think it does give um just a little bit of an extra, which really the other clubs don't want. Certainly, Dundalk to have, and and probably Shamrock Rovers as well. 
should they have had to stop training for two weeks before the season is the question. Well, <laughs> well maybe, but uh, I, I think the difficulty was for teams, you, you did your pre-season, mm. you started the season, you then stopped. Like I, I did an interview with Darren Dillon, who's the, the strength and conditioning coach, Shamrock Rovers, and he was saying how when it went into lockdown, they pretty much said to the Rovers players to kind of take a break and if they wanted to do stuff this is kind of what they could do but he was saying that you can't give it's very difficult to give kind of professional athletes you know some you know you need to be doing this training if there's no end goal in sight and we really didn't know when football was going to come back at that stage and when it just looked like okay it, it looks like it's going to come back and then suddenly like the Bundesliga was back um, and it came back really soon and people probably saw there was a um, there was a lot of injuries. Now I know there was increased substitutions as well, but there was a lot of injuries because the players just came came back straight away. But it meant that once that kind of date, uh, you kind of knew, okay, it looked like football was going to come back at the end of July. Teams were able to kind of pick up the train, but nothing beats the the collective training. And then there's been a number of kind of preseason friendlies as well. So um, it'll probably be. A little bit of advantage to those top four teams, but maybe not too much. Well, just look a few more stories then before we wrap up here for what's just been a bit of a catch-up, I suppose, considering we haven't podcasted in a while. Um, want to talk a little bit about Waterford with the new manager and, and Alan Reynolds departing. Let's start with Alan Reynolds moving across to Dundalk, jumping ship there, and, and also taking up a position with the FAI. Thoughts on that one? Bit bit disappointing from a Waterford point of view. Oh, I'd say they're very disappointed. Now, the we can talk about John Sheridan who's come in as, as manager, but just to Reynolds has, has done very well at Waterford over the last few years, but great opportunity for him to go and work with the Ireland under 21 team that are, you know, are on a very good chance of, of getting through to the, uh, to the finals and then going to work with the perennial champions, uh, Dundalk, you know, does it, wouldn't... Does, it, does it smack a bit of though that, we we knew that Waterford were hoping for that European place last year. It didn't happen. There's a smack a bit of um I don't know, that that he's been a bit let down or that he's not particularly happy with how things are. Well, I don't I don't you can't blame you can't blame I know you're not blaming Reynolds for, for Waterford not being in Europe last year, but it must have been, you know, very, very difficult. And then what that did was have a knock on effect of on what type of squad they could have even finishing out the season and coming into this season as well. Whereas, you know, you're going up to um, going up to Dundalk and you've, you 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 got Champions League coming next month. Like it, it's while Dundalk have lost uh, the likes of Rory Higgins and Stephen O'Donnell, like they've gained Anil Reynolds and of course Shane Keegan is mm. their uh, opposition analyst as well in Dundalk. So it's you know it's a very good setup that they have up there. So, mm. but it's 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 disappointing for. For Waterford, I'm sure they would have wanted to to hold on to him. But you know, John Sheridan is a very um, very experienced uh, manager and player as well. So that was quite a coup to get to get him in. Yeah, it feels like we've only been talking about John Sheridan in the Italian ninety pod. So it felt like we'd summoned him there. I suppose there's not really too many more stories to talk about. That I did want to uh, very briefly ask you about Dara because you did uh, quite a lot of talk with the Shamrock Rover players and coaches uh, in these last few months, I suppose. So you you might be in it. An interesting place to tell us what you think this time has done to, to their chances of, of challenging, I suppose. And, and also, a big downside for them is that they've, they've lost Greg Bolger for, for quite some time, it seems. Although it looks like Sean Kavanagh's back as well. Yeah, so they would have... Sean Kavanagh had, had knee surgery, actually, after the end of, of last season. He was actually injured in the FBI Cup final. He got injured the, the week before. So um, he needed knee surgery. So he was never available for the start of the season. But he is back training, so they hope to have him have him involved. It was a little bit difficult for recovery, having to do physio sessions over over Zoom in the likes of the March and April lockdown where you couldn't do anything. So so Cavan is available, but, but Bolger is a, is a big loss. He was a really important co- uh, contributor to, to Rovers last season. But they have a wealth of talent in, in midfield, but you want, you want everyone available. They, they, they seem to be carrying a few a few knocks as well. I think Graham Burke might be carrying a knock. Um, bit of talk, maybe even Jack Byrne uh, might be fully fit. So, so there's there's a few there's a few bits and pieces. I'll be, I'll be interested to see the the team news coming out just at the end of the week of 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 who is available. But yeah, it seemed like Bulger 
they, they called it a serious leg injury in one of the preseason uh, games and, and saying that it was out for the rest of the season. Uh, of course, the, the season is only another four months in terms of if you'd yeah. said that, you know, out for the season after five games at another stage, you'd be going on at something more serious. But yeah, um, but yeah no, a bit of a, obviously disappointing for, for him and for Rovers fans. The Shamrock Rovers are back in action then on the Saturday, five o'clock. They're up against Finn Harp. So I saw, did, I know there's a promotional video of the FAI doing the rounds. A glorious, glorious video. So fair play for that. But I also did see that Finn Harps have done their own little promotional video. It was sort of sounded like the music from the Dark Knight with that sort of deep voice trailer guy who does the, you know, this summer, the really deep voice. <laughs> um, so that was, that was excellent as well. Looking forward to seeing how... Finn Harps kick back into action as well. Uh, so that's the game on Saturday at five. We mentioned water for the moment ago. They take on Shell Saturday at two. And then the Super Sunday game, lads, because it is second ver- or third, I should say, versus first in the Watch LOI table on Sunday. <laughs> it's Bose versus Cork. Probably get the, you know, the record amount of hits, you'd imagine, that one. We'll have to wait and see if they, if they keep... I'll tell you what, I want them to keep up this table. Keep, keep the competitiveness going. Make more people... Uh, Feel like they have to get involved and watch. But it was obviously a couple of interesting stories on their side. Just before we wrap up, obviously the the speculation about Danny Mandrew, uh, which I think I'm right to say it came from our own Dave Donnelly linking them to FC Twenty. <laughs> I was just I I've been talking to someone the previous twenty four hours saying that extra time we don't really go into transfer speculation, and then it was like we were just getting all these hits from the Netherlands as Dave wrote the story that. There seemed to be some interest uh, from FC Twenty in Andreas. So yeah, if we if we we want to be careful because if we go back to the last significant interest that Dutch person had in an Irish player was uh, that FIFA player who was interested in uh, Carl Shepherd over here. Who I think we asked Carl about him on the on the show, and he was uh, unfortunately aware of him. He was selling shirts and all about <laughs> Shepherd, I believe. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty interesting link on the same. Um, be a good little move for, for Danny if it does come apart. Thoughts on, on Bose using the Aviva, actually, for, for their home ground in Europe? Yeah, uh, just reading, Neil Arudin had a piece in the sun about this. Uh, just as a concern that in relation to COVID, where, you know, you, you need your physical distancing, like for the games that are this weekend, the players aren't, the players aren't going to shower after the games. They're going to head off in their gear. So all, all that kind of stuff. But for the... European games, the just concern is the Daily Man might meet all the the requirements, particularly around COVID. And there seems to be discussion possibly about Oriel Park as well. Whereas if they go to the Aviva, um, you know, much bigger changing rooms, you know, their changing rooms are even, you know, geared up for rugby teams, you know, big squads, big men. So m- much more like that. And then the other thing is that, you know, if you're a Bohemians fan, you can't go to the games. These European games will be behind closed doors, whatever the Irish government decide. UEFA have made the decision that these games are behind closed doors. So it's not as if you're kind of giving away your home advantage and you can't, uh, you know, if you're a fan, you can't walk down the road and, and go into the, the Jody and watch the game as opposed to, you know, going across the Aviva, not because it's that far away. But so that's what the, that's what the thinking is. I, I did see some wags having the laugh that if they get there, it'll be the first time that, Bose will play a competitive game in the Viva Stadium, but it I, all joking That's aside, they won't. For you to bring that up. I know, yeah, but, they, <laughs> but all joking aside, they won't have they won't have played a game there. They won't have been in the dress rooms. Like more than likely, they'll probably go and have a visit. I know Shamrock Rovers did that ahead of the cup final last year against Dundalk. Dundalk well used to playing in the Viva Stadium. Rovers weren't, and during the week ahead of the cup final, Rovers just went down and had a look and, and had a walk around. So there is there is a bit of that. The home advantage, because I did write about this during the lockdown, big thing about the home advantage, and uh, it's something I'll be looking on when the league is back as to what the percentage rate of home wins is. But the advantage you get from being at home is actually from your own fans influencing the referee and a bit of unconscious bias kind of thing. So um, whether the game is going to be in Daily Mount or in the Viva, you won't have that because it's not going to be a crowd there. So I think it makes sense, and it'll look really good on television if they get that. Mm. That the home draw. Just a reminder for people: those European games are one-legged. There'll be a draw to decide whether you're home or away. Quick one for you, actually. Just as I mentioned, Super Sunday. I know the Shamrock Rovers two or II or whatever we're calling them these days are also playing at three o'clock. Does that? Do you get the two for one with the Watch LOI stream the way you would have at, for for the season ticket? Not because they're not because first division Declan. So no. But if you're concerned about it, shit value. 
please look at extra time on Sunday because my I'm in the uh, I'm in the press box for this one. Did we just want just one of the things I wanted to notice about or just say about Cork, just that you know there's been a few um transfers in and out and and on extra time we've been doing these restart club previews. Um and we've got I think we've probably got eleven, maybe eleven up at this stage, but Graham Cummins has gone back to Cork City from Waterford um as a centre half. So he had been playing centre half with Waterford. Can't think of too many others who've made the the old move to centre back. Chris Sutton and Dion Dublin stick in my head. That's the only Gary Doherty went the other way. He made the move up top. Yeah, it it it, it doesn't happen very often. And uh, like I I've been I suppose I've been reading with interest and and listening with interest. Uh, Graham Cummins has been writing in the Irish Examiner and has been doing. Uh, Oh, I'm going to promote another podcast. Well, their their legacy podcast, but he's been doing did some really good podcasts uh, over the last few months. Different interviews with with uh, players, so he's using his connections from um, from his time over in England as well. So, um, but yeah, it is uh, move back from centre half to uh, from centre forward to centre back. Yeah, it doesn't happen doesn't happen too often. Speaking of promoting another podcast, we have to give we have to give a little mention to Crawley's call. As our Dave Dunley <laughs> call it, uh, Alan Cawley's podcast, and and I only do this because each of the individuals on that podcast has actually joined us on this, and we've we've worked with them in some capacity yeah. before. So and they're all very good lads. So uh, they they you know I I actually haven't listened yet, but I will. Uh, they, they get the answer. I'm sure it's very good. But right, we probably better leave it there because this roundup went on quite a lot longer than I thought it would be. I, I guess me thinking we don't We're have a just... whole lot. To- no, Declan, we're just desperate to talk League of Ireland football. I know, and this is what it's I was not thinking. not the first division, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, that is the, the little asterisk I want to put beside this. We're not going to be ignoring the first division. This is a very much a, a warm-up act to everything that's going to come. we still got Treaty United coming back, lads. You know <laughs> what I mean? That I guarantee you that'll be like almost certainly first guest on here if I get my way. I'm very excited about that. But there is obviously a, a first division we have to talk about, so we'll be absolutely piling in on that the next few weeks as well. Andrew will very much make sure that I'd be cracking the whip. Gentlemen, thank you for coming back on and not being snarky about uh, being kicked off for, for, the, for the month we did the Italian 90 podcast. I just enjoyed listening to them. So yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm actually, I'm wearing my, uh, my West Germany jersey. Oh, lovely. Season. We're on our Zoom call here. Lovely. I'm not sure if uh, this is probably more of a visual thing. And I sell uh, warehouse clearing uh, New Ireland kit because I'm sure they're announcing <laughs> it next week. Got the, got the message that, yeah, they're going for about 50% of what they were so I said ah, go on why not I haven't bought an Ireland jersey in years big ugly tree symbol on the front right gentlemen thank you so much look we'll be back and we'll probably speak a hell of a lot more about Watch LOI in the next few weeks hopefully you've uh, signed up you enjoy your game and we'll be back next week It was that time that Dutch FIFA player loved Carl Fletcher and he kept picking him all the time and we ended up using a clip of his. Well, yeah. The, we the, asked the, Carl about this. He, he, yeah. I can't say, I've used Carl Fletcher again, haven't I? Yeah, oh, yeah. you did. You did. <laughs> I was only thinking of that Dutch guy earlier and I was like, who was he, who was he following? Carl Fletcher? No, Carl Shepard. Say Shepard later. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> this is where you put in the sting where you were supposed to be talking about Walter Zenga and you talked about the Zenga uh, bus. Yeah, as uh, Walter Zenga makes a sort of a rare stylistic save. He, he, it's a free kick that comes in originally. He makes a, a pretty solid save, but it rebounds out to the onrushing uh, Peter Vermes. Uh, Vermes hits a low effort as Wenger rushes out, and it's, it's, it comes off the perineum. I'm going to say it like that. I mean, the ball hits his gooch and, and rolls to a stop before the line as the Italian defender lofts it clear. So if not for uh, Wenger's gooch, Italy might be in a bit of trouble here, but it finishes 1-0. And Did you just call Walter Zenga Walter Wenger? I don't think so, but uh, if I did, it was a Freudian slip. Let me let me go with that again, maybe. No, I'd keep this in. No. Definitely not. Keep Definitely it. not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of Dave throwing the cow's ledger. I'll put it in at the end, maybe, so you can get a little <laughs> <listen to that laughs> <after. laughs>